You're an advocate and an expert on issues of conflict and human rights, particularly in Sudan. What's your background? Um, what motivates you to do this work? Um, I was born and raised in the Darfur region of Sudan, and then anybody who was following the news of conflicts in the last decade uh, would definitely come across the name Darfur. That is uh, where I grew up, and um, I had to leave my own country, Sudan, uh, by the end of 1989 because of my political views. And I lived as a refugee from that time, uh, mostly in the United States. Um, for somebody with that kind of background and with the kind of uh, problems that we had in the region, it is not a matter of choice. But by necessity, I became uh, somebody who is looking at these issues and trying to make the world know about them so that we can have global solutions to these global problems. So you've been watching this situation literally for decades. Are the problems the same now? <laughs> well, you know, they, they, they are different, but they're still the same in the sense that the, the, the problem continues and it mutates into different other problems. So we find that in the beginning, there was a problem of neglect and marginalization of racism and this and that, and mm -hmm. a political you know, a marginalization. Then it becomes a problem of IDPs and refugees, and it becomes a problem of generations lost without education, without health care, without hope for the future. And then the money that is used to fuel this you know, war uh, or wars, and then the lost opportunities of investing in the human being. Right. Uh, all this together, if you put them, we, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm now interested, and, and with the Enough Project, we, we have something, a series that we are, we are doing on the uh, economies of war, how the perpetrators manage to finance these wars, mm -hmm. you know, continuously for decades. And also, what does that lost opportunity mean in terms of dollars and cents? And also in terms of the regular development of human beings in, in, a, in a set place in the world. So th that, that cost is huge in mm -hmm. billions of dollars if you look at it. And also the less opportunity of having the generations, the normal you know, progression of life. So that is, th that is one of the, of the things that keep me awake at night. Right. How we as human beings make up for this loss and move on. Let's get specific. So, are you calling for, um, you know, the African Union to play a more sort of robust role here with more robust support from the international community, or are there other mechanisms that you? Want oh, to there see? are other mechanisms. There, there. In in every country, we find that there are traditional ways of conflict resolution. What what we need to do is yes, making institutions like the African Union viable and robust institutions. That, that working towards resolving problems rather than being a club of heads of states. We have to have good governance in Africa as well. You know, uh, we, we have to have good education and, and, and healthcare system. We have to provide uh, potable water for every uh, man, woman, and child in Africa. And Africa is full of resources. We have to use these resources rationally. You know, uh, look at the Congo. Uh, you know, th some people. I read some of the estimates that what is taken out of Congo and what is available today of resources worth about $35 trillion. I mean, that is, I don't even know how many zeros are there in that number. Right. So if we are looking at one country like that and looking at 53 other countries in Africa, each country has its unique you know, contribution to the mm -hmm. world, then we can imagine how much we have. Africa is not poor. Africa is, is run poorly. It is not poor at all. So we have to look at you know, ways of making Africa take care of itself with the help of the world, rather than bringing the help of the world to Africa and, and keeping it the way it is. And, 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 and that help is only in, in terms of you know, a little aid here and taking care of refugees there and, right. and, and what have you. We have to invest in human beings. We have to work on international trade to work for Africa. We have to, in equal footing, 
uh, exchange these resources for technologies and education that is coming, for training, for best practices, for laws and regulations that are going to, to help the, 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 the people of Africa become part of the, of the, of the international community. Right.